you know that like stringy orchestra tune-up thing that plays when you start up your PS3? I do. That's about the only thing that's PS3 unique about all these nominees. That may be true, but having said that, it's still a nicely varied category. You know, if you're into strategy, you've got XCOM. If you're into shooters, you've got Max Payne 3. If you're into sneaking around, you've got Dishonored. So a lot of stuff to appeal to, lots of appetites on the PlayStation 3 this year. That's very true. A lot of excellent games. Here are nominees. The nominees for PlayStation 3 Game of the Year are... Dishonored. Solve anything. Far Cry 3. You live in this jungle. You die in this jungle. My Mass Effect 3. I won't warn you again. Go to hell. Max Payne 3. Too long I've been stuck in between. XCOM Enemy Unknown. You're experiencing heavy casualties. And the winner is... Dishonored. One of the really cool things about Dishonored was that, you know, it's this original IP. It's the first time they've made a game in what is bound to become the Dishonored franchise. When you first look at it, there's the visual aesthetic to it. It's got a beautiful, stylized European look. They built this brand new world from scratch and really made you care about who these people are. From little Emily Caldwin to the, the brusque Admiral and uh, all those other characters, they're interesting. And they are interested in you and what you can do. The city is really, feels very alive. It's got a, a lot of character to it. The sort of like scattered details really made this world come to life. You get a lot of the history of each part of the city. And that's a way that Dishonored makes a connection and draws you in. I thought it looked really great and it helped the uh, the game stand out. Especially in the first person genre, you get a lot of like modern military settings and things like that. I haven't had as much fun first person platforming in years as I have in Dishonored. There's all sorts of paths you can take throughout the level, yet at the same time, it's not just a completely open world game. It's pretty linear in where you actually want to go, but how you actually go about making that line is completely up to you. The way the levels are designed just makes it such a pleasure to sneak around and in, even if you don't want to be sneaky. Dishonored, I think it finds a really great balance between sort of linear corridor design while still maintaining an open world feel. It's just a lot of fun to move through the world and, you know, stop time and throw something at someone and then get away and then see it hit him in the face. Or you want to take a mine, stick it onto a rat, transport into that rat and run the mine up to the people yourself. I like it. Running around killing dudes and assassinating dudes is super fun. Jump down and do terrible murder on some guards or throw a head down at them because you have a macabre sense of humor, not like anybody I know. You can go the stealth route or you can go the killing route or whatever. This one, it just feels really natural switching between them at will. So I try to be as non-lethal as possible and I had a lot of fun talking to other people about those inevitable moments when I bungled things, everything went horribly wrong and I had to kill like five dudes in a row and it completely uh, tainted the non-lethal approach that I was going for. The stuff you can do, like summoning rats and, you know, assassinating someone and turning them to ash, and that blade just right in your face, tempting you with that violent outlet every time, creates this great push and pull. I think some of my favorite video games are the ones that are so open and dynamic that they create these stories where you play the game in a certain way, experience these certain chains of events, and then you go back and you find people who also play the game and then you tell them what happened to you so that you can hear what happened to them and just see how wildly different those things were.